Electricity Human Resources Canada is a not-for-profit organization working with the electricity industry to increase the depth and breadth of the skills of the workforce. The Renewing Futures uh, project that I'm going to be talking about today is specifically designed to deal with growth in the human resources and the skilled workforce that's going to be deploying new renewable electricity technologies across Canada. What I'm speaking about here today is actually a, a large research project that spanned more than two years. I've just outlined some of the key components of the research here, and I encourage you, if you're interested, to go back and look at detailed documents that describe each piece. There's a technology review, an employer survey, a labor market model, uh, province-specific summaries and details, as well as sector summaries. But the ultimate objective that I'm going to speak about today is a national human resources strategy. So to begin at the beginning, Canada is going to install and deploy renewable electrical capabilities across the next 10 years with growth of anywhere from 20 to 52,000 megawatts of new power. This is going to increase the skilled workforce needed in this area by two to three times. Renewing Futures is about developing a national strategy that will allow the industry to meet these very specific and very large and growing human resources needs. I'm going to talk about the research first and the strategy second. When it comes to the research, I'm going to talk about really four areas, growth, technology, the stakeholders that are involved, and the labor markets that they confront. And then when it comes to the strategy, I'm going to talk about the goals of the strategy, and in particular, 12 actions that we're proposing that the industry might take, and then the implementation. Growth. Growth is by far the dominant characteristic that globally describes renewable energy. It's not at all uncommon to find over the last decade in many jurisdictions, including Canada, a tenfold increase in solar or wind power that's been connected up to the system. This capability, uh, this growth, is on the one hand a huge positive. It creates opportunities, possibilities for new businesses and jobs but it's also associated with risk and uncertainty. The pace of growth also involves some disruptive change. So what do I mean? One example would be where renewable energy capacity in areas like wind, for example, is meant to displace existing systems like coal. So the disruptiveness is when you take jobs out of the coal uh, segment and put it into the wind segment. On top of that, as you accelerate growth, as you add more to the industry, uh, you create issues around safety, around work and system quality, and around productivity. So the growth has many different facets. To understand the growth in our research, we've created three scenarios. These scenarios describe different potential for the expansion of renewable energy systems across the next 10 years. So what you see here is a graphic that tracks the accumulated growth in the capacity in the first case, the lowest case, the utility case, reflects what the utilities plan to connect to their grid over the course of the next 10 years. The next scenario, the NEB scenario, is based on a National Energy Board forecast. The highest scenario, the scenario C, the vision scenario, reflects what the industry sees as its capability and what the provinces see as the goal for their policies around renewable energy. The accumulated growth in capacity that I just showed you represents jobs. It's the operation of the system. A far more uh, volatile and a far more uh, um, cyclical change is reflected in the actual construction or installation of the new system. So what you see here is the three scenarios now portrayed in terms of annual increments to the system. And you can see in the two lower cases, there's actually a decrease in the investment that we're expecting when you get farther out into the scenario. Under those circumstances, employment in some areas would actually fall. The vision scenario, though, is one of continuing and accelerating growth in the deployment of the new renewable systems. I'm speaking here about six renewable energy sectors, wind, solar, geothermal, bioenergy, large hydro, which is actually a huge component of Canada's existing system, and small hydro and then marine or tidal systems. These six systems are all new technologies that are being deployed. The last component, interconnection, is a whole different area. 
but in fact, the first six depend on the seventh. Interconnection has to do with the capacity of the utilities to bring new renewable electricity onto their grids. The seventh area has to do with the implementation of smart grids, of new substation systems, new technologies that are crucial to the deployment of all the renewable sectors. This table shows you the growth across each of the scenarios. So the scenarios are listed down the right-hand side. You have the increase in megawatts of added power, as much as 42,800 megawatts in the, in the vision case. The middle column is the number of construction and installation jobs created across the decade as the investment unfolds in each of these areas. The last column is the number of jobs created in the operation of the system. So we get to a total of as many as 22,000 jobs in the vision case. Just going to say a few words about technology. The technology review that we, that we conducted looked at all six of the technologies and reached a conclusion that between now and the year 20, 2022, the technologies that will be deployed in Canada are largely the technologies that exist right now. That is to say that the workforce needs to be trained in the specialties that are required to exist to, to install the existing technologies, but we don't expect any new technologies that would require new training or new skills. Now, that's definitely not the case in the seventh area that we looked at, interconnection. Here you see major changes happening in terms of smart grids, in terms of modernization of the grid systems that require new skills, and this will, be, will focus us on the training and on the deployment of trades like IT technicians, power electricians, power engineers, power station operators, that whole area of the workforce. They need some new technologies. Now let me speak a little bit about the stakeholders that are involved. And first of all, I'd like to explain that the stakeholders are spread across a supply chain that begins with research and development and runs all the way across to the actual utilities themselves, the people who are delivering the electricity. In between the four areas of the supply chain that you see highlighted in white, these are the areas where we're tracking employment and where we're analyzing labor market conditions. So it covers manufacturing and distribution, it, it covers construction, it covers design, it covers operation, maintenance, and integration. And it also involves a very large number of different employers, all the way from the big utility companies down to small construction companies, a very different group and a very diverse group of employers. Let me just speak a little bit about the employers, drawing from survey results that we include in our research. We did a survey over 300 renewable electricity employers uh, all across the country, and some really important characteristics emerge. They are a small, dispersed, and diversified group. Diversified not just geographically, but across the supply chain that I just described. Diversified, too, in the sense that most of the companies in the sample didn't just work in renewable electricity, they worked in other areas as well. All of these companies confront the risks that are associated with high growth, and one of the ways that they confront that risk is by offering most employment in terms of short-term contracts. They all, all of the employers in the sample shared a focus on very rapidly growing hiring requirements, um, and they all recognize the need for their, new employer, for their new employees to have skills that are portable across sectors so that they're consistent with the firm's capacity to adapt to risk. So we asked more of the employers. We said, what are, your, what are the biggest issues that you confront as you look into the future? And generally speaking, human resources was not their first concern. They were concerned about the economy, about government policy. Um, they reported that they had had, or fewer than half of the firms, had had any difficulty recruiting people in the human resources area over the last year or so. They had a high level of confidence in their own human resource capacities, and when we pressed them on that, we discovered that, in fact, their plans often required them to hire new staff from other industry employers. But at the same time, all of the employers in the sample saw the uh, planned for and anticipated a large increase in their employment across, across the future. When you think about it, this is not a viable situation for the whole industry to cope with the growth that we're describing. Let me talk a little bit about the workforce. We identified 18 different occupation groups 
that are critical to the deployment of the renewable technologies. They're divided here into uh, uh, leaders and managers, uh, engineers and technologists, and then trades. And while I'm going to speak about each of these occupations, the analysis goes into each in more detail. They all have quite distinctive features, and they're all critical to the deployment of renewable electricity. Each of the occupations is employed across a wide range of, in of industries, not just renewable energy. This diagram is meant to illustrate the labor markets that you need to consider when you're, when you're looking at these different occupations. Most of the occupations work across a wide range of industries, across a whole province. The big blue circle is meant to capture, in a sense, the biggest labor market that often will be the market that in fact determines compensation, qualifications, benefits, and all of the other key labor market outcomes. Within that market, there's an equally important but smaller submarket that would be the utility industry that employs, in fact, many of these occupations. The third market is the actual renewable energy group itself. And in fact, that's divided into two pieces, a part of the renewable uh, employment that falls within the utility industry in a part that falls outside. We analyze and we look at labor market conditions in, across each of these dimensions for all of the different occupations. The next dimension that we're looking at here is the growth in these occupations across time. So here I'm returning to the time frame that I, that, that I showed you before, looking at 10 years out to the year 2022, and in fact looking at growth, uh, the accumulated increase in the workforce for these different occupations. What you've got here is three different markets. The solid line at the bottom is growth in the total market, which is noticeably lower than a slightly more rapid pace of growth for the utility industry, but of course the really major growth is in renewables themselves. While these other industries, while these other labor markets will grow maybe 10, 15% over the next decade, employment in renewables will increase by two to three times. So one dominant labor market reality here is that the renewable employers will be adding much more to their workforce and drawing a much larger share of the overall labor market in virtually every one of the occupations that I just described. This is the same image looked at, looking at it from the point of view of, of regions. You can see here, for example, that across the period that we're looking at, across the scenario to 2022, Ontario is by far the largest regional market in terms of additions to the renewable electricity workforce. This really isn't surprising. Ontario has been a leader, certainly in areas like solar and wind, um, and they will be uh, the biggest single market uh, across the provinces for the work in the occupations that I've been describing. Let me say a word about the trainers. In a sense, this is the critical piece because the trainers will be the, the core, the pivotal point in terms of a strategy to add to the workforce. What I'm going to talk about now is an inventory of renewable electricity training centers across Canada. We researched virtually every training program post-secondary that looked at any facet of renewable electricity, and we found that the vast majority of the programs are concentrated in the colleges across the country. These college programs emerge as a kind of a core for post-secondary training, and we want to build a strategy around these programs and around improving and expanding them. This table counts for you 95 different renewable energy training programs that are available across Canada, all the way from university programs down to simple short-term training programs for specializations. But you'll notice the vast, the biggest number by far is almost 40 renewable training programs that are situated in the colleges. These programs are the starting point that we're going to build on, and we're going to talk about how those programs can be linked on the one hand to the much smaller number of, of apprenticeship programs and trades programs that look at renewable energy, and for that matter, can link to the university programs that are being offered to engineers in the same area of renewable, um, renewable energy, renewable electricity. Now, it's really important to understand in all of this work the role of the provincial governments. We're speaking here about energy and about labor, and in Canada, 
the provincial governments have jurisdiction over these two areas. So each provincial government's policy around energy and labor is crucial to the scenario, crucial to the strategy. The work that we're doing has been broken down by province, and there are very big differences in terms of the mix of energy that will be deployed and the workforce that's needed to actually uh, to actually do the building and to operate the systems. And there are associated with that particular regulatory issues for labor and for energy that the provinces need to implement. And so there's a very specific provincial piece to the strategy. A few words about labor markets. So thinking back to the diagram I showed you a moment ago, the dominant labor market in many cases, the big blue circle that I showed you a few minutes ago, described labor market's conditions for these occupations um, in each of the provinces, for example. What you find over and over again is that the occupations that the renewable electricity employers need to hire are the same occupations that are being sought by a lot of other industries. Labor market conditions for those occupations, in fact, are very tight. It's very common, in fact, to find rapid growth in construction, in oil, gas, and mining. Uh, and the demands of these other employers will compete with the renewable electricity employers who are trying to find these skills over the next decade. And this plays out across the full range of occupations. So engineering, um, uh, the, the skilled trades, and in fact, the electricity generating industry will compete with other utilities, with other infrastructure projects in areas like transit, pipelines, water systems. So competition across many employers outside of the renewable sector is a critical feature of these labor markets. And it's not just a question of understanding the requirements that these other employers have for an expanding economy. Even more important is the demographics the change in the, in, in the population that's driving retirements. For all of the occupations that I've been speaking about, the number of, the number of people in the workforce who will be retiring over the next decade is a far larger number than the number of new jobs that will be needed. Retirement is a particularly important labor market dynamic that crosses all the occupations and all the industries. It's a crucial factor for the trainers and for the employers. So let me just say a few words to sum up what we found in our research and, what, and the findings that will guide the strategy. Rapid growth. Rapid growth for across all the different scenarios um, that will involve the deployment of a lot of new renewable electricity capabilities uh, and add uh, a, by order of magnitude to labor requirements. Looking at the employers, we find that in fact they don't recognize right now human resources as a major issue. They think that they can manage the expected growth by hiring away from other employers. We don't see the generation technologies themselves as changing and requiring a change in the workforce, but we do see important technological changes when it comes to the distribution systems. There are key occupations that will expand, and in each case, they, as they grow, to accommodate the renewable electricity sector will require new specializations, new training, new certification. This training is concentrated right now in college, in college programs, and a strategy to enhance the workforce might begin there. The jobs that we're describing are distributed across a long supply chain, across a diverse set of employers, all of whom see these labor markets differently. But the one thing that all of these employers have in common is their interest in the same set of occupations, and they all have the expectation that they're going to be hiring a lot of people to accommodate a high rate of growth. So let me go on now and talk about the strategy. The strategy is meant to help the industry build the workforce that's needed for the deployment of these renewable technologies. It's built on the idea that there could be a two- to three-fold increase in the vision scenario, and the industry needs to prepare for the risks that are associated with that, especially understanding that they'll be competing with labor demands in other industries for most of the occupations that, that they're looking for. So a collective action is needed. Right now, if you see what the employers are planning, they don't recognize the magnitude of the task that lies ahead, and the industry as a whole can't build what needs to be built with a human resources strategy that involves essentially poaching. 
there needs to be a common focus on the occupations that we've described that draws all of the industry players together to create a national starting point. So the strategy needs to accomplish certain things. It needs to build a consensus. It needs to encourage young people and job seekers to look for work in renewable electricity. Um, it needs to provide more graduates from post-secondary programs to fill all the jobs. We need to build bridges across the different, the different occupations, the different training programs, and the different certifications that are available in the industry so that people can see a career, people can see a future that goes beyond just their first job um, in a renewable electricity, uh, 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 with a renewable electricity employer. The strategy needs to protect the employers from skill shortages, and it also needs to protect the workforce that we're going to draw into the industry from periods of unemployment. There are common elements that I'll describe as part of the strategy, and then there are elements that are specific to each of the occupation groups. The common elements, most importantly, involve building a unified vision, using background documents, using the findings that we have in our research to make the industry understand the urgency that's associated with coming together and building plans now so that the workforce will be available um, when the construction, when the installation work uh, begins. There needs to be a common view around training and certification that will meet those needs. How do we measure success? Just as a, as a point of reference, based on the numbers that I've been describing, we would propose that the programs that will train the workforce that you need would need to increase enrollments and graduates by order of magnitude 50% by 2015 and double most of these programs by the year 2022. The program, the strategy, is built across five platforms. Each platform represents one occupational group uh, that has quite specific needs, and th the action plans are, at least uh, I think nine of the action plans, in fact, are designed to deal with each of these five occupational groups. At the center of the national strategy are 12 strategic actions. The first group of these actions are designed to align with each of the platforms that I described, with each group of occupations um, that employers need to, need to hire over the course of the next decade. To start, we need to build critical leadership skills. Stakeholders told us over and over again during our research that this industry needs leaders uh, because there will be many new companies, many new opportunities, many risks, and very particular and distinct requirements that require a leadership style unique to the sector. The second strategic action focuses on professional engineers and scientists from the point of view of the post-secondary programs. Here we would address faculty, and we would say to faculty, there will be many jobs for engineers and for scientists in, renew in renewable electricity. We need you to adapt, to expand university programs, to trade them with the skills that they need. The third strategic action also addresses the scientists and the engineers, but now from the point of view of the employers. There are, many, there are many programs that exist now for engineers and scientists that allow employers to expand and add depth to the workforce skills that these groups have. These programs can be adapted to renewable electricity and greatly facilitate the expansion of this critical group for the industry. The fourth strategic action deals with the college programs that primarily focus on technicians and technologists. This is the largest group of existing programs. It is the starting point, it's the core that we would build a strategy around. And the first order of business is to expand these college programs so that they can produce the number of graduates that the industry will need. But there's a second order of business here as well, and that's adding specializations, um, that's developing these programs in new ways that would better fit the future needs of the employers. The fifth strategic action has to do with the trades. The Red, Red Seal trades are apprenticeship programs across Canada that are recognized across all the provinces and that encourage mobility. Right now, the Red Seal trades do not have a lot of content that targets renewable electricity skills. We need to bolster these Red Seal trades with that level, uh, with that particular kind of specialization. 
The next strategic action speaks specifically to the interconnection skills that I described before. There's a, a growing need for very specialized, highly skilled trades, technicians, technologists in all the different areas of interconnection, smart grid technology, substration construction. We're talking here about power electricians. We're talking about um, highly skilled tradespeople with specialized skills that span both the renewable electricity employers and the utilities themselves. This strategic action would be a joint action for both the utilities and the renewable electricity employers. The, um, the next strategic action is specifically designed to deal with the needs of large hydro employers. By far the biggest group of, of, of the biggest workforce in Canada in renewable energy is in our large hydroelectric facilities. And there are plans right now to build a large number of major hydro projects uh, across the country in the next 10 years. This would be the biggest single source of renewable energy. There are very specific human resources needs for these large hydro employers. These are the traditional utilities, and they, more than other groups, confront these issues of retirement, for example. There are a series of specific strategic actions that this group should undertake to work with the large hydro employers. On the other hand, we need to build programs, not just expand the existing programs, but build new programs that specialize, for example, in solar PV. This will be a very large area of expansion, a lot of new jobs, and need to expand, refine, and specialize the skills that are taught to solar PV installers. The next strategic action, the same approach for wind technicians. In fact, wind technician programs will probably be the single largest increase in employment for the renewable electricity sector. Now, the last three strategic actions speak to the broader picture, how the industry can develop, in a sense, the workforce across all the platforms. The tenth strategic action deals specifically with industry awareness and the need to explain to employers what's in it for them. As I described before, there's a large number of small employers that are diversified outside of renewable energy. They need to be convinced, they need to understand that their human resource strategy needs to involve other people in the industry. Working on their own, they won't be able to meet the human resources needs that are coming. The eleventh strategic action has to do with careers. It's going to be important to offer young people the prospect of a career in renewable electricity, not just a first job. You build a career path by building bridges that link together the training programs, that link together the certifications that already exist, and building new ones. A career path for young people is a critical strategic action. Finally, all of these strategic actions should be coordinated so that in the long run, the industry will have national certification for the key occupations. This is a crucial goal. It looks at, for example, interprovincial mobility. It allows the industry to share across all of Canada the risks and the uncertainties that come with the growth. This is not an easy strategic objective. National certification requires a lot of work. And it's proposed here as a long-term goal that the industry should work towards as it implements the first 11 strategic actions. So implementation. The work that we've done, the research that we've done to, to create this strategy has already identified over 400 participants who are aware of the issues that I've described and who, in fact, share a common view of the needed strategy. This is a foundation. This is a starting point for building up a critical mass to implement the strategy. The implementation has to take place at the level of the platforms. It has to take place province by province for it to succeed. But it's really important to keep in mind the potential for the industry to add 100,000 jobs by 2022. That creates momentum. That's a huge positive statement in an economy where people are having trouble finding jobs, where prospects of a career appear to be grim, the growth that's described here, and the, social, the exciting social opportunities for environmental improvement that are offered here are a huge positive statement. There needs to be a national investment in human resources that would parallel the huge investment that we're describing in new renewable energy deployment and new renewable energy capacity. 
Canada needs a national human resources strategy that will bring together industry employers to work in common to meet these substantial labor requirements. They have a shared interest and a shared point of view and a very specific list of trades and occupations. Their success will create a skilled workforce, but also create a carbon-free energy system that brings with it global business advantages.